Hi hey guys. You tired of seeing my smiling face yet? I'm still smiling. This might be the first time you guys are seeing my smiling face, so if you have, just bear with me here for a little bit and I'll do a little background on what we got going on and what I've been doing and what my team's been up to. So I'm going to create this video to share on all of my personal platforms that I have for my business and my personal accounts. And I'm also going to use this video to share it to some of the communities. Um, I'm involved with several of the communities around the area and me and my team have been working real hard. My affiliates and partners and brothers have been working really hard at gathering supplies, manpower, tools, and everything needed to help you guys out in the field where you guys are having problems with fires and specifically the firefighters. So uh, I'll give you guys a little background and then a little update and then ask for your help and support and let you know what kind of avenues and platforms that I have um, for that. So. A little background on who I am. My name is John Parmenter. Um, I started a company a couple of years ago called Ride Revival and Outdoor Adventures. Um, Ride Revival is a company that works on cars. We do automotive restorations. And then we also have a community of guys on the side that like to do automotive enthusiast type things. We do car shows. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the car shows that I've hosted. Um, we're Solve Oregon official event coordinators. So we go out in the forest and we clean up all the time. I work with ODF. I work with several nonprofits. I work with just about anybody I can who does good and tries to help people. So um, I've lived in the community my entire life. My family moved here into independence in 1963. My grandfather raised my father and my mother here. Um, I was raised here and now I'm raising the fourth generation of farm mentor in this town. Um, my grandfather um, built and started the mortuary in town. He also built what's now White's Collision. Um, my parents used to work in that and then I'm a generational auto body tech so I've not taken over the shop and it's morphed into Ride Revival. So that's a little background on where I am, who I am, uh, so you know who I am. So anyway, fast forward to fires. Hmm. Fires. Okay. So I got a call. Um, we were all going to have this historic uh, red flag, red event warning, whatever historic fire event was supposed to come down. Uh, Monday night I went to bed knowing this was supposed to happen. Tuesday morning I woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning and it felt like it was 5.30 in the morning and my head was real screwed up. Um, I quickly and immediately tried to figure out what was going on and within five minutes I got a call from one of my members. Um, my members are pretty well connected in the community. We all are in the mid Willamette Valley area, uh, somewhere in the PDX area. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... Anyway, uh, I got a call from him saying that, are you seeing this? Are you seeing what's going down? I just got a call from the Gates Fire Department and Gates is doing everything they can to stop what is there, but their firefighters are out of Gatorades, they're out of waters, they're out of some supplies, and I got a call. I'm going to go get in my truck, my member says, and I'm going to go buy a hundred bucks of the water and I'm going to drive up there and give it to him. So I said, hold my beer. And real quick like, I put up a PayPal pool on... Tuesday and said, Hey guys, this is what we're doing. This is what we're going on. We're going to posse up. I'm going to buy some water. We're going to get some stuff. I immediately contacted my affiliates and let them know what was going on. And they came through. And by the time I got to Salem, we had four pallets of water, four pallets of water loaded up on a trailer and in the back of three trucks. And we were on our way to Gates, Lines, and Mill City. So this was Tuesday morning. Um, Took that stuff all up there and immediately we got told that they're good on waters, but they need Gatorades, they need towels, they need chapstick, they need lotion, they need all these like little specific items because a lot of those guys got literally pushed out of their house. The fire chief in Gates um, was standing there talking to us and he said that he got a call from his buddy that said, where are you at? And he was like, I'm at my house. He opened the back door, there was fire. He ran outside, there was fire on the side, ran to the front, there was fire on the other side, ran back into the house, grabbed his socks, grabbed his cell phone, grabbed his boots, ran back out to the car and drove to the fire station. And that was when I talked to him. So <clears throat> we came back down the hill, uh, contacted a few people. I had a bunch more donations and uh, we tried to get out to Lincoln City and Newport, but Lincoln City, the highways at Lincoln City and Newport were both closed. I had two more members that were on their way out there responding to some people in the community out there that were needing help with livestock. Um, another one of my community members um, is a licensed and registered alpaca transporter in the United States, so he immediately got in his transport vehicle and started transporting alpacas. And by the end of the day, we had gone from... <clears throat> I live in Independence, so we had gone from Independence to Salem to load up supplies, and we went out to Mill City, to Gates, to Lyons, came back, um, then we made it as far as Hubbard and um, 
Aloha, Aurora, Aloha. So we went to Hubbard first and then Aloha. We dropped off our supplies there, came back and uh, updated the post on everything on where we were at. Um, Wednesday morning, we, we had ran back up to the fire station at Lyons. Um, after we dropped all of our stuff at Aloha, I actually took the and dropped the pickup off and then loaded my Jeep real quick with the extra stuff that I had gotten from um, another Jeep club that I'm in contact with, another one of my affiliates. So they went out and they gathered all the, the toiletry stuff that the firefighters needed. And we ran back up the hill about 10 o'clock at night on uh, Wednesday or Tuesday or whatever. Um, so two runs up the hill. We've been to, um, wherever. We've been running around like I'm like mad. So anyway, um, we woke up looking for somewhere to go, somewhere to help and we ended up landing in Springfield, Oregon. Um, we helped. So Angela is the one down there in Springfield and she's running the donation center at the Red Cross in, in Springfield. They're at Springfield High School at the football stadium. Um, if you guys go down my group page, you can see some of my updates and whatever. Um, so we helped them run traffic for about 12 hours down there um, while they were getting evacuations and getting all that stuff set up. Um, we came back on Wednesday after spending the whole day and night there, came back late uh, Thursday morning, woke up and started to immediately gather some more supplies. Um, by the end of that day, we had another two full flats of water, um, Gatorades. I had cash donations. We had gathered socks for the firefighters, um, chapsticks, more lotions and all that good type of stuff. What we learned in all of our passings and all of our doings is that, um, one, the supply train is pretty filled right now as far as donation centers are concerned. So when we're talking about donation centers, we're talking about like uh, the Oregon State Fair, Polk County State Fairgrounds. Um, we're talking about Oregon Cross or Red Cross donation centers, uh, Habitat for Humanity, um, the, that type of thing. So that supply train is full and they're actually in, there's like, a million independent supporters right now that are out there that are gathering supplies like I've seen a feed store in Malala I've seen several drops in Dallas um, I've seen just all over the place and then but in the end what we found is, is that there's a lot of people out there that know that those are going to those corporations in the long run they know that those supply trains are full and we also know that there's a whole bunch of people out there that are gonna need those supplies that may or not be there two weeks or a month from now so us as an independent entity, um, as a member of the community, um, as connected as we are, we're going to continue to put that PayPal pool up there. We're going to continue to gather supplies and we're going to hold on to those supplies, inventory and warehouse those supplies ourselves until the need arises within our community from the firefighters or some of these dispersed people within our community that need help. There's going to be people that are staying with other families. That's going to be a giant burden financially on those. We want to help you guys with that. We're going to leave our PayPal pool open. I also have four drop points for you guys if you guys want to drop to an independent party that's not affiliated with a large corporation that may or may not keep it within your communities. So I'm an independent on the Main Street of town. My name is John Parmenter. You can look me up on Facebook. If you drive through town, you're going to see all the Jeeps. I'm the Jeep guy. So there's a blue trailer sitting in my front yard. If you want to drop supplies, everybody knows what supplies everybody's going to be looking for. If you want to drop supplies, drive by my house, drop them in the trailer, and I'll take care of it. My shop is in Dallas. Um, you can look me up on Google Map. It's Ride Revival. It's right out there outside of Dallas, outside of Walmart. Um, feel free to drop your donations out in front of the office or out in front of the shop anywhere. It's a real safe, secure location, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. I'm out there on a regular basis, and I'll pick those up or warehouse them and inventory them. Um, I appreciate your support that way. If you're looking for a quick cash donation, because you trust me and I appreciate that, um, and you'll let me go ahead and get the supplies that we need that way, um, I have the PayPal pool. You can go ahead and just click on the PayPal pool link. I'll leave it down below. It's simple and easy. You can use a credit card. You can use your bank card. You can use your PayPal account, however. If you want a little more official way of donating um, with your money, like cash money or donations, I work with a local nonprofit organization that's also associated with the community and is local. They've agreed to work with me and filter money directly to me 
that comes into them as a cash donation. So that way you can get a full 100% write-off, tax write-off for any of the money that you donate. And then that money will go directly to me. And then you can follow me on my page. You can follow me on my YouTube, wherever you want to. And you can see exactly where we're going to put that money. If you have a company or you know a company or you're a manager of somewhere that you want to donate some supplies to us that you can hook us up with a discount, um, whatever the case may be, I also work with another nonprofit local um, a 4 by 4 community. They're a 501c nonprofit and they're ready to accept goods. They're ready to pick them up. They're ready to handle it and they'll hand you a receipt for anything that you donate. So there's several avenues for you guys to support us. If you like what we're doing and you want to see the stuff stay within the community and you'd like to see where it goes and who it affects and all that good stuff. Um, like I said, I've been here forever. Um, this is my community and I don't have any other vested interest. Like I said, I work on cars for a living, so I have no other vested interest in doing what I'm doing other than helping people. And if that's what you want to see happen with the supplies and the efforts that we got going on, please, please, please donate if you can. Stop by my house and drop it off. Plans going forward is that we're gathering supplies. We are gearing up with boots, gloves, rain gear, chainsaws, axes, winches, chains, straps, first aid equipment, fire extinguishing equipment, water, and extra supplies. We're also readying our team because we're predominantly a 4x4 and off-road community. There's two of our 4x4 and off-road communities that are passing up and ready to go. We're ready to get the woods and get your roads cut back open so that you guys can get back into your houses and see whether you what you got there whether it's gone whether it's there and figure out who's going to be dispersed in the long run or who's going to be able to get back into their houses um, we have the ability to do that we've got able-bodied men that are ready to go with equipment and boots in hand if you want to support our efforts in that way give us a cash donation on one of the avenues that i'm going to leave you down below we'll put it to good use you can follow any of our groups below and uh, we'll just go on to the next this is a this is one of those events that by the time it's over, um, there's not going to be a single person in the Pacific Northwest that's not affected in one way or the other by it. Um, I told my 10-year-old son yesterday that this is a fire that they're going to talk about for the rest of his life. And uh, I truly and honestly believe that in my heart. I've been from one side of the state, well, one side of the Willamette Valley to the other. Um, there's not really been a fire area that I haven't talked to or seen. And I'll tell you this, that there's not a square inch of the state that doesn't fill with smoke and make you choke. And ash falling out of the sky and you can't go anywhere without tripping over somebody that's got an incredibly wild and unbelievable story to tell you about how they survived the fire so it's hard for me to keep together sometimes i got a family of two and i lived here forever and i couldn't imagine what's going on in some of these communities um if you like what i'm doing if you uh, want to see what's going on and you want to see us supported just help me out and uh anyway Talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Um, like, share, subscribe. Please share if you like what I'm doing. Share, 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 share because it'll really help. And uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at Ride Revival underscore Outdoor. That's on Instagram. Ride Revival dot Outdoor Adventures on Facebook. And my name is John Parmenter. And you can look me up on Facebook if you'd like. Ride Revival dot com. Um, there you go. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to go in here and edit this thing and throw it up. I'll uh, talk to you soon. I really appreciate you. Stay safe. Stay out of the smoke. <sighs> Much love, Oregon. Talk to you soon.